Hey peeps, it's your girl Re, your social media butterfly, and here's what's trending. In case you missed it, 31-year-old St. James resident Mario Dean died on August 6th, three days after being severely beaten while in police custody at the Barnet Street lockup. This after being arrested hours before for a ganja cigarette. It is alleged that Dean was beaten and stabbed by three men in a cell he shared with them at the Barnet Street lockup over the use of a bunk bed. Yet, despite this claim, the JCF continues to come under fire. Attorney at law Roy Fairclough claiming that the Barnet Street police have serious questions to answer as to how Dean came to his death. If you lock him up, it is your responsibility to ensure that he is safe and is no danger to himself or anyone else. Having gotten wind of Maria Dean's death, public opinion on the matter has manifested itself not only in massive physical protests within the city, but online as people have taken to social media to voice their opinion. From Critical Mind, we have There is a knot in the pit of my stomach when I think about my cousin, nephew, male friend being in police custody. Following that, with that should not be. I should trust my police force. I should be sure that they will protect me and my family. Rather than stand here and read out related tweets, I've invited voices from the social media community to offer more insights. My name is Crystal Tomlinson. My handle on Twitter is at Critical Mind, K R Y T I C A L. Mind, like the one that you have. My name is Yannick Lambert. Online on Twitter, I am Chunchi. And on Instagram, I'm Chunchi Mino. All right, hey guys, my name is Ron Perry, popularly known as Quiet Perry. You can follow me on social media at all things Quiet Perry Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. My understanding right now of the Maria Dean incident is that he was brutally beaten inside um, the cell that he was placed in. Police custody is not, perhaps not the safest place to be. There are two different stories coming, coming to the forefront. One, he fell off the bed. Two, he was beaten. Again, apparently he was rude to the officer who then decided, you know, I need to have you here a little longer so you learn your lesson. And unfortunately, a part of that lesson seemed to have been a meeting inside the cell that landed him in the hospital, unrecognizable to his parents, and nobody can properly explain what happened. Well, the anger towards the police is completely understandable. I think the police are the ones who are not providing us with the correct information. I think that they're hiding some things about the incident, what happened, and I think there's a lot of cover-up going on. Uh, well, people have a right to be angry. People are frustrated. Um, not necessarily at the, at the police force, but certainly at the specific group of officers who were in charge at the time. These situations happen all the time, but because of the corruptive system that is set in place, nobody wants to say, okay, fine, a police did this or a police did that. They want to cover it up as smoothly as possible. It, it does not, it, it doesn't, it can't, it does not absolve the police. I personally believe that we need to hold the police accountable for this because this would not have happened if the young miss at the front desk had just let him go. But no, she had to take his comment personally. We are now blaming the incident on one man who is a schizophrenic, who shouldn't have been in that cell with Maradine in the first place, and another man who is a deaf mute. Not no more than I'm gonna say, all right, cool, and the camera on the back, I'm gonna beat him up and thing, and then I'm using these three persons as a scapegoat. Why is it that these three persons have to be mentally ill or they have to have some sort of ailment? They, they have a, a phrase in law they call occupier's liability um, or employer's liability. Both of them suggest that whoever is acting on behalf of you, whatever they do while they are acting in your name or on your property, you must assume responsibility for it. You say I'm not like police, which is pretty much everybody else in Jamaica. Anything will happen while in their own you is your responsibility. Yes. <laughs>
I don't understand how is it like it, it takes you 30 minutes to realize that there's something happening in one of the jail cells. Who is monitoring the cells in the first place? And for somebody to take a beating like that and you're gonna tell me say nobody never hear when it's happening. The man just him, him, him did mute. Him did just mute and just take the beat and just lie down so. I don't understand. I just, I just don't get it. It's right there. It's like something happening in your living room and it takes you 30 minutes from your bedroom to go and see what's happening. Half an hour to beat someone to death in 30 minutes without anyone who is responsible even hearing anything or it's just it's ridiculous i don't believe it i really don't believe it what i'm taking away from this maria dean situation is that it could have happened to any one of us it could have happened to my mother my my brother my sister my father's 20 baby mothers anybody Social media plays an integral role in everything currently in this generation. I believe it's the best tool we as public have to ensure that what the higher heads don't want us to know or don't want us to see, we can basically make sure that we have this information available. Social media keeps these issues in the, the conscience of the average man who has access to technology. We are able to use the tools that are provided to us now to kind of ask questions that we need to ask and push for answers. So you can rally support with your hashtags and your retweets and changing your profile pictures to reflect whatever issue you're trying to champion. And then that in itself will create a new new story. It gives people a chance to flesh out their opinions, to look for more information, and to connect the dots, to see where else in the world are these things happening? How are other people dealing with it? How can we learn from those, those strategies to make a difference and to force either the police force, um, the government, or the community to look differently at the circumstances that they find themselves in. Human rights organization Amnesty International has chastised the USA, tweeting US can't tell other countries to improve their records on policing and peaceful assembly if it won't clean up its own human rights record. This in light of their recent visits to Ferguson, Missouri, where the fatal shooting of an unarmed black teen, Michael Brown, by police officer Darren Wilson has resulted in demonstrations and rioting in the days since his death. Ferguson has served to not only highlight ongoing racial tensions, but has brought into question the level of authority extended to the police force and the extent to which accountability is exercised, as amongst other breaches of human rights, M. Tracy tweets, so to review, officers won't display ID or reveal their names upon request or state the agency for which they work. But let it not be said that the power of social media bears no fruit, as for over a week where US media failed to highlight Brown's death and the responses to it, platforms such as Twitter brought live updates to the online community, revealing realities such as this. Hey guys, it's still me here outside of studio today with my lovely assistant Julia as we get ready to respond to the challenge issued by our great and powerful leader Stephen Gregg. Hi, I'm Stephen Gregg and I've been challenged by Jordan Scott to do the Ice Bucket Challenge. I've sent out the challenge to Team RE, that's Dufton, Julia, Rissa, Satania, everybody on Team RE and Team JNN, Jervis, Unique, Lafayne, all of you. If I can do it, you can do it too. So here it goes, the Ice Bucket, ice bucket Challenge. Woo! Three, two, It's not only about getting wet, no, it's, not. it's about donating to a very important cause. I'd like you to head on over to the ALS Association's website for information on how you too can help. 
our some of the mama fears. Special thanks to Flirt Boutique for this delightful outfit. Join me again right here on RE TV when I'll recap everything using your tweets and Facebook comments. Tweet us at RETV Jamaica using the hashtag RETV. You can't really do the robot that well. And leave your Facebook comments on our Facebook page at facebook.com slash RETV Jamaica. Walk good and tweet responsibly. And remember to check out the links below for videos shared in the show.